Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. It's morning here. I don't know when you're seeing this, but I'm glad to have you. Glad you're back. I'm Rebecca. I'm your host, and I am currently recapping the trial of Chad Daybell. He is on trial for the murders of Tylee Ryan, J.J. Vallow, and Tammy Daybell. Back in 2019. So... We're going to hear all about the cell phone coverage today and testimony of a couple of family members. So stick around. If you can make it through the cell phone stuff, there's some good stuff with the family. You want to, you're want you going to want to hear that. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome. And if you're new to the channel, I am so glad to have you. Welcome. Welcome. So yesterday we got day 14. This is day 14. We're over half probably probably half half of the witness over 30 witnesses have testified um, to this point and uh, yesterday was an FBI specialist uh, special agent Nick balance now he let us know his name but we were not allowed to see him he was uh, I think because he's with the FBI and he's with the he said he was with the international division but he's with a um, an area called CAST, which is, he's doing cell phone analysis. But is he doing it internationally? And so he doesn't he want anybody to know what he looks like. And there are no pictures of this man online. So uh, he testifies and he, he focused on four phone calls and several different areas, mainly Chad's residence the areas where near the burn pit where Tylee Ryan's remains were found, the area near um, the pond where J.J. Vallow's remains were found, uh, Ch uh, and both Alex and Lori's condo. And there was a lot of back and forth. So the first date, if, well, let me back up a second. He spent the first hour explaining to the jury all about cell phone analysis i would have been like if as a juror excuse me your honor can i bring my coffee into and and crochet i need crochet because i think better when i'm crocheting just it's just your honor please can i have some crochet okay thank you thank you otherwise i'm gonna be asleep um <laughs> yeah it was that riveting it's just so tedious you know trying to explain this to a jury and I've heard it explained much better than what this guy did, but there's no question that he's an expert at what he does. Um, <laughs> yeah. So he, the first date that he was asked to focus on was September 9th. We know the last proof of life for um, Tylee Ryan was September 8th, where they were all, you know, up in Yosemite having a good time. So the communication that going into the eight, you know, from the eighth into the ninth, it starts at two forty-two a.m. And at that point, we know that Alex and the way the way they're tracking Alex's phone, the FBI agent, is through the GPS, his uh, the Google. Apparently, you there's an option on your phone you can opt to have your GPS tracked. So they were able to track Alex's phone, and we're this this FBI agent was very careful to say, this is where the phones were, not necessarily the people. I can only tell you where the phones were. So at 2.42, uh, between 2.42 and, and 4, 4 a.m., Alex is at Lori's condo. Now, their condos are very close in proximity. So this guy, he was able to narrow, he can't say exactly where the phone is, but within a certain range. Um, and he made that range very narrow. So he knew that he wasn't at his own condo, he was at Lori's condo. And then um, that morning between 7.20 and 8.03, well, let me back up. After 4 a.m., Alex returns to his own condo. Then that early that morning, Lori and Chad are like texting back and forth. 
I love you. Now, we don't know what the texts are. We only know that they were texting back and forth. Which, I mean, that's not unusual. They're having an affair. They're texting. Good morning, honey. How did you sleep? Did you dream about me? You know, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> so at 8.03 a.m., finally, Chad picks up the phone and he calls Lori. Then Chad... At 8.11, he gets his second phone and he calls Alex and they have a three-minute conversation. But now Alex is still at his condo. Chad is at his property. Then um, after that, between 8.15 and 8.58, there's a whole bunch more text between Chad and Lori. But Chad's phone is pinging off three different towers, which means... Even though he's at his residence, he's moving around. Um, and by residence, I mean his property. So, because and the cell phone's always going. When you're moving around, the cell phone's going to look for the strongest signal. And it kept changing because he's moving around the property. Then we know um, at from eight forty nine to nine fifteen, Alex Cox leaves his condo and is traveling during that time to Chad's property. Why? Why are you going to Chad's property? I pray tell, yes. Then between 9.21 a.m. and 10.57 a.m., so that's over an hour, Alex is at Chad's property near where they found Tylee's remains. Where was Chad? Where was Chad? Hmm. Between 1035 and 1220 that day, we're the day we're still on the ninth, the day after Tylee was murdered. Chad is at his property, and we know that during this time, Alex is out by Tylee's remains. Chad's at his residence and he's texting Lori. Then uh at 11.42, Alex leaves the property, Chad's property, and starts traveling back to his condo. And then shortly after that, Chad leaves his property and heads over to Lori's. And then after that, they're all three at Lori's condo. Having a little meet and, meet and greet. Yes. The next uh, time frame that this FBI agent was asked to look at was September 23rd of 2019, the day after we know the last um, proof of life of J.J. Vallow was on the 20, the night of the 22nd, when Alex um, brings him back from his condo, sleeping, takes him up to Lori's bedroom to go to sleep. So between 3.59 a.m. on the 9th and 8.35 a.m. Chad is texting Lori multiple times. Um, now, Chad is at his house. Lori's at her house. At 9.25 a.m., Chad calls Alex again using his second phone. Did he think that the police were not going to find this second phone? I, I don't know. So, during this phone call to Alex, Chad is at his house and Alex is at his condo. But then right after that, Alex starts moving towards Chad's property. Also, also right after that, Chad and Lori are texting back and forth. She's still at her property, but Alex is moving towards Chad's property. Then between 955 and 10, 12 a.m., Alex arrives at Chad's property and his cell phone GPS is showing that he is very close to where they find J.J. Vallow's remains. Between 9.30 a.m. and 10.27 a.m., so this is where, while Alex is out on the property, Chad is texting and calling Lori. Also, this is a time when 
Chad's phone again is moving around and bouncing off of different towers. So he's probably out on the property. He's probably not in his house. If he was in one area, it would just be one tower, but he's moving around. Uh, at 10, 12 a.m., Alex now, whatever he was doing there, he's done and he's traveling back to his condo. So, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah. And there were other times that this agent went over where Alex's GPS shows that he's at Chad's property. I thought it was really, really interesting. So the next, uh, after you, we get out of the weeds of, you know, how this all works. Uh, on cross-examination, though, John Pryor focused on the fact that the software that is used by the government, the FBI, is exclusive to them. Nobody else can use this software. It's not available to the public. So in other words, what he was saying without actually saying it is, you know, as the defense, we can hire anybody to authenticate what you did or recreate what you did. And uh, the FBI agent says, yeah, but there are other programs that can do that. So, touche. Okay, now, now we're after lunch. By, by the time all this is said and done, we're after lunch. Then we get Tammy Daybell's cousin, and Patricia, and Patricia's daughter, Hannah. Now, Hannah was up on the stand first. Young, young lady. And she was... Um, problem, I'm guessing a teenager at the time this all goes down. And she said she learned about Tammy Daybell's death. Her, this would, what would that make her? Like second cousin? I don't know. I wanted to say aunt. It's not aunt. Sec I think that, I think that makes the second cousin. I don't know. I, mean, I got cousins too, but who knows? Um, anyway, they learned about, um, she learned about Tammy Daybell's death when, her grandmother calls her mom and tells her. So they go to the viewing and she, there's a line at the viewing, you know, there's, you wait in line and you get to pass by the casket and see Tammy and at the end of the casket or the beginning, somewhere near the casket is Chad Daybell. So they're going, she goes through the line first with her father and she said, you know, Chad's there and her father said, what happened? What happened? Um, and he tells her father, that Tammy had been sick that day and that she came, that she had been vomiting and coughing. And then she came to him around 10 PM and said, uh, I'm really not feeling well. I'm, I'm going up to bed. And he stayed down in his office. He doesn't go to bed till about 1 AM. And when he goes to bed, he finds her on the floor. So then she goes, this witness, Hannah, she goes through the viewing line a couple hours later with her mother. And um, she's, she also says, what happened? <laughs> and he tells her that she had been coughing very violently that day and that she came to him around not between nine and 10 and said uh, he, she was going to bed. And he decided he was worried about her. So he goes to bed with her. And then he wakes up around midnight when she rolls off the bed and he finds her half on the bed and half off the bed. And uh, so Hannah was asked about his demeanor and he, she said that um, he was calmer than she would have expected him to be. He was only emotional when someone else was emotional. Like if somebody came up and started crying, he'd start crying. <laughs> I don't think Chad's that good of an actor. I think, here's what I think. I I honestly think he probably loved Tammy. But I think it's a different kind of love than what he had for Lori, which is sort of that lustful love. And I, I honestly believe he probably approached, this is all my opinion, I think he approached Tammy about polygamy. And Tammy wasn't having it. I think Chad wanted his cake and wanted to eat it too. And it wasn't going to happen. So 
yeah, he was getting emotional at times when other people would come up to him. So on cross-examination, because during her testimony, Hannah had said, used the phrase that he had gone upstairs and downstairs and, you know, insinuating there was another second floor to this home. The defense attorney is like, are you sure that's what he, he said? Yes, I'm sure. Well, are you aware that this is a one story house? But I was watching another podcaster who showed a picture of the house. There was actually an addition to the house where there is a second story. There, part of that house does have a second story. So, And apparently that was not brought out by the prosecution on redirect. Don't know why, but okay. Then Patricia, her mom, testifies. They were cousins. They were seven months apart. They grew up together. They both went into, worked at the same elementary school. And she was very tearful during her testimony. Very emotional. Um, she learned about the death of Tammy when her mom called her. And she said, I had to ask her to repeat that because she didn't think she had heard her mom right. And she said it, it was just so strange and confusing because Tammy was young and healthy. And she had to ask her mom to repeat it like three times. And finally, her mom's like, yes, you know, Tammy's mom called me and said that she had died. What? Okay. So she goes to the viewing, obviously, and she goes through the viewing line with her daughter, Hannah. And she felt like uh, she was asking about his demeanor, Chad's demeanor. And she said she felt like he should have been more sad or he was only emotional when other people were emotional. So she said she asked him what happened and he told her uh, she was not feeling well, coughing, coughing a while. She'd thrown up. She goes to bed around 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. Uh, he stayed up working and then he woke up in the morning when she fell out of bed, which is interesting because this is not Nobody caught on to this, I guess, but this is not what the daughter said she heard when she went through the line with her mom. They heard a couple of different. So there's different versions. Chad's telling different versions to different people. But I, what I think is happening here is obviously Patricia and Hannah are close, their mom and daughter. And they've probably, you know, since 2019 have compared stories and it, someone's a little confused here because <laughs> now they're telling two different stories. One's telling the father's story and then, yeah. Hannah swears she heard two different stories. Um, Patricia talked about the funeral and she said that Chad made the strangest comments. She said he talked to, he said, Tammy was not easy to live with. She suffered from depression. Now, why would you tell everybody at the funeral that? And he said she was lazy. Why would you tell people? How do you, that's not how you talk about your deceased wife. She's lazy. I don't know if that's how he said it, but oh my God. So then they go sidebar, 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 sidebar. Uh, they ran out of witnesses. <laughs> no more witnesses. Because the state had, I guess they didn't anticipate getting through this so quickly, the cell phone thing so quickly. And uh, because, because they had taken Tuesday off, they had told their witnesses to come on Wednesday. So the judge told the jury, you know, it's diff scheduling is difficult when you have these big trials and please forgive the prosecution and blah, blah, blah. But we'll have plenty of witnesses for you on Wednesday. Have a nice day. That was the end of the testimony yesterday. Yes, a lot to digest. So what do we got here so far? We know that Chad was on the property at the same time that Alex was on the property the day after the deaths of Tylee Ryan and JJ Vallow. There you go. We don't know who murdered these two, but we know where their bodies were found. And we know that Chad was there and Alex was there probably burying them. Wow. 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 All right. That's the, that's the show for today. <laughs> I don't have any video clips for you today. My hair looks like it went to a light socket. Uh, the wind, Whoosh, Wichita wind. <laughs> anyway, 
Have a wonderful uh, day, and I will see you tomorrow in Crafting and Crime Daily. There's no trial today, but I'll have something else for you to talk about. Um, I'm listening, like I said, I'm, I've listened to an interview of Heather Daybell. That is fascinating. We're going to talk about that. And an interview with the Cox, uh, Alex Cox, brother and father, which I think you will, or brother and uncle, brother and uncle, which I think you'll find fascinating. So we'll talk about that in tomorrow's episode. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care. Bye.